We've taken film which has 19 distinguishable tones and organized it into a method whereby we can accurately predict the range of tones from absolute white without detail to total D-Max black. These are 19 reflective tones which vary from 100% transparent, which is white, to total opaqueness, which is black. A densitometer reading of a gray card of 18% reflectability should read 0.70 density. To begin this test, let's identify the meters used in setting up this system. This Minolta 4 incident meter reads the amount of light striking a surface. This generally sets our main subject's area at a hypothetical 18%, which guarantees that the subject's area will render true tonality. A reflective receptacle which can replace the incident dome can also be attached to the meter. A reflective meter will give a reading of 18% reflecting off of any mass or luminance. For example, if you take a reflective reading off of a white shirt and a black pair of slacks, you'll have two different readings due to the difference in reflectability. The meter will try to set both objects at 18% or value 7. Here's the same meter with a 5-degree reflective attachment which allows precise spot readings within a 5-degree area. And this is a new Minolta 3F which is a one degree spot for extremely critical work. This meter reads ambient light as well as flash. The main benefit of a reflective meter is the ability to always predict what tones are in your photograph. Once you have that ability, you can make any mass read 36%, 9%, or whatever value you desire. To set our 19 values, we'll first create a swatch book of grays. In setting up this system of different grays, we select F11 as our midpoint, or value 7. F11 is the midpoint of our lens aperture. Therefore, it allows a range of exposures to be taken both above and below F11. Reflective readings are taken off of a white sheet of foam board, and power is adjusted until F11 is obtained. Keep in mind that we're setting up a system and not applying it as of yet. We then aim our camera at the white sheet of foam board and shoot at F11, which is our meter reading. A densitometer should read this 0.70 density. We simply call this value 7. This is assuming that your ISO is correct. A film's ISO is rated properly when the lens aperture, four stops below an 18% reflective reading, results in an image of one-third brightness above total D-max or black. Close your aperture four stops from what the reflective meter reads, or in this case from F11 to F45. If your film is rated properly, you'll see the first stain or image, which is one-third of a stop above total D-max or black. This value 19 shot at F45 is one sixteenth the value of seven. If the film is more sensitive than the manufacturer suggests, it will render brighter than one-third above total D-max. If the film is less sensitive than the manufacturer suggests, it will be darker than one-third above D-max. If you open your aperture one stop from F45, you have a value 16. This is three stops below 18%, or one-eighth the value of seven. Open one more stop, and value 13 is the result. There are also two full values between each stop. For example, between value 13 and 10 are values 12 and 11, which are distinguishable. We're now at value 10, which is one half of 18%. Open your aperture to F11, and you now have value 7, or 18%, which is the original reflective reading. Open your camera to F8, and you have value 4. This is twice the opening of F11, therefore it's twice the brightness. Open the aperture one more stop to F5.6, and you have value 1, which is four times the brightness of 18%. You now have one-third of a stop below total transparent. 
Opening the camera lens one-third stop more will give you 100% transmission of that film base, which is identified as white without detail. You have now gone from pure black to pure white, from value 19 to 16, 13, 10, 7, 4, and 1, with two tones between each stop that can be utilized. This procedure can now be repeated with color. Instead of allowing white light to strike a board, we'll cover our strobe head with a blue gel and repeat the process. By aiming a reflected meter at the background, we now know how to obtain 18% blue or value 7 blue. This may not be a .70 blue on a densitometer, but it will give you the same predictable blue every time. If you open your camera's lens to f5.6, you'll have a light pastel blue of value 1. Your next shot is at f8, which is a value 4, and it's one stop darker than the previous value 1 blue. Since f8 is twice the aperture size of f11, it's also twice the brightness. Value 10 blue is at f16, which is one stop below value 7. One more stop below to f22, and you see a value 13 blue. All of these colors could have names. However, the numbering system actually gives you the formula for recalling or predicting a particular color. With this theory in mind, you can generate a swatch book of many different colors. An art director can ask for a specific tone and you can produce it with your first shot. You can develop this book out of Polaroids, actual printing chrome lens, or transparencies. Our swatch books contain five of each color. These five are in the most distinguishable area of the film's curve. Anything above value 13 or below value 1 shows little or no difference between tones. Notice that above each gel color is the Roscoe number for that particular gel. We're consistent with our colors by being consistent with our film emulsions, exact number of gel colors, and film processing. With a red gel on the strobe head, the effects can be seen from a value 1, 7, and 10. Notice how differently the red gel reacts as opposed to other colors of the same values. By looking at an amber gel, 1, 7, and 10, you can see exactly what you'll get from each different value. These are the reasons for testing this system in your studio. As light meters, strobes, gels, and labs differ, it's important to make your own swatches that you produce. So far, we've only talked about producing a swatch book to offer your clients the various color values they might desire. To produce the tones that your client has selected, notice the apertures change on the bottom of the scale. The midpoint of F11 remains constant, but the apertures are actually reversed for putting this system into practice. Collins has designed a calculator for aiding in predicting your chromosomes. For example, with this blue gel aimed at a white wall, the reflective reading is F16, which says if you set your camera at F16, you'll have a value 7 blue. But instead of F16, set your camera at F11. F11 is twice the opening of F16, so the result is a value 4, which is twice the brightness of value 7. Now cut the power until the reflective reading is F5.6 again. The meter is telling you to open your lens to f5.6 for 18%. Again, leave your camera at f11. f11 is four times smaller than f5.6, which means it allows one-fourth as much light to stain the film. This results in a value 13 blue, which is one-fourth the brightness of value 7. Before we go back to the photo session with Josephine for the application of this chromosome theory, Let's talk to Collins about his many uses. Chromosome is a uh, concept we came up with. The name, at least, is, uh, was more of humor. Chroma, meaning color, and zone, meaning controllable layer, uh, or controllable brightness. In this case, it was really more predictable brightness. Uh, probably the most useful aspect of it is, is not only judging the color, but having someone other than yourself predict the color. Uh, our director is asking for a certain blue, a screaming blue. A screaming blue is a subjective term of blue. Uh, but if they can pick it out of a chart and say, I want that particular blue, and then be able to generate that off of a white wall, gray wall, black wall, that shows a tremendous amount of control within your photography and is good not only for your images, but also for your business. Uh, but 
the system was, again, designed not for only reflective readings off of walls, but to have total predictability of, of brightnesses of, let's say, exit signs on location, uh, brightnesses of windows to where you know what you're shooting on the camera. Uh, taking a reflective reading uh, aimed out the window of, of a house, you know exactly what the brightness in the window is going to be long before you shoot it. And that's really what it's about. Is It's not the old zone system of trying to expose for one area and develop back because in color photography, at least E6 films, we do not have color by development by inspection. <laughs> I would think you do at least. But the, um, the ability to have prediction, normal process time is really what this system's uh, designed to do.